Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Steve Sotow, and this is just a quick little review of the new box. I try and do these when they come out. Sometimes I don't get around to doing them, and I, I end up taking too long with editing. But I am going to quickly just go through this. There's not really going to be any editing in this. I'm just going to record the file, upload it, get my thoughts out on it, and I hope you enjoy it. So starting with the Ultra Rares, um, the, this box really, let me just focus on this real quick. The box focuses on a couple of archetypes, Malefic um, and uh, DDD. And uh, Cybers, not really an archetype, but it does include a lot of Cybers cards. Um, then also Dino Wrestlers, <laughs> which is interesting. So uh, I've got a few things to go over um, and, and just a few things I want to give my opinion on. Uh, not every card, obviously, otherwise this video would be five hours long. But uh, there's a few that I want to talk about. So Malefic Stars is a great start, uh, but without... Uh, Malefic Cyber End Dragon. I don't think the deck's going to be that great, though. I will say, I, I for Malefic, right? I will say though that Malefics are more of a buff to Gravekeepers than anything. Um, if you have Malefic Starless Dragon and Gravekeepers, you are preventing your opponent from getting rid of your Necro Valley, uh, which is really good. Now, I think it says they can't be destroyed. Um, it does not say they cannot be banished. So, stuff like Cosmic Cyclone will still go through, and if that's the case, then Stardust will also die. Um, so you do need to you know watch out for that, but at the end of the day, it's still a decent strategy, and I think it's it's definitely a buff for gravekeepers because now you've got and instead of gravekeepers you know typically being slower playing, uh, now you have more of an explosive big monster uh, on the first turn type of play that you can do. Uh, so yeah, I think it's it's worth trying out for sure. Uh, Blue eyes isn't really that good because um, it, it, they have to be in the deck. The thing with Stardust that makes Stardust and Cyber End so good is that their uh, malefic, uh, their non-malefic versions are in the extra deck, so you can just banish them um, as soon as you grab this card. If you have Blue Eyes in your hand and Malefic Blue Eyes in your hand, and you don't have any more Blue Eyes in your deck, then you cannot summon this, uh, which is an issue. So, uh, but yeah, you could also argue that it's deck thinning, and I definitely do think this could work in certain Blue Eyes builds. It would have to be with the Mausoleum of White, obviously. Um, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. I don't think this is making Blue Eyes any better. Um, Malefic Rainbow Dragon? Maybe? <laughs> I mean, it's 4,000 attack on a just instant summon monster, so... It's it's worth testing out, I suppose. Uh, but besides that, there's some other stuff I want to talk about. Um, mainly with DDDs, I'm not too experienced with them, but I do know Genghis is really good. Uh, Swirl Slime is good. Uh, let's see, what else in the Super Rare department? The Synchro is good. I, I do remember... Um, the Synchro being good. Um, let's see, what does it do? Okay, so it can make it uh, uh, three or more. Yeah, yeah, so you can have that. So you can make this thing have like 6,000 attack, which is kind of crazy. Uh, which is definitely possible for this deck to do. Uh, and then, um, if another DD monster is summoned, you can target a DD monster in your graveyard for summon it. So, um, it's, got, it's not like a big insane boss monster that's going to blow up the field. It's not flashy like that, but there is another card I think that does that fits that role pretty well. Uh, the fusion, which basically when attack is declared, following this card you can target another DD or D a dark contract card you control, return to the hand. If you do, could one face up monster bone trolls to this card, except the battling monster. This card can stack equal to the combined attack. So that's really good. It doesn't blow up stuff, but it, it's actually better because it, it doesn't destroy things. You can get over stuff that's immune to destruction. It still doesn't get over uh, cockatus because it, it does target. Uh, but at the same time, if you can steal the other monsters the opponent controls and gain attack, you can easily swing over Cogatus with naturally with 3,200 attack. Uh, but if it's in Element Saber, chances are it's being boosted by the field spell and with Elyster's effect from the hand. Uh, so you do need to have quite a bit of attack to get over it. So, uh, But besides that, the other cards in here, Beowulf is good. It, it does piercing damage, which is great. Uh, Oracle makes you gain life instead of taking damage from card effects, such as... Uh, the Dark Contract, which is a very good card. It basically says once per turn you search a DD monster from your deck. But uh, during the standby phase, you take 1,000 damage. This is going to make you gain uh, 1,000 life points, uh, which is very good. This also has like a, a, a steep cost of 1,000 as well. Uh, but it allows you to fusion summon once per turn. Uh, and then, let's see, where else? There's, there's some other contracts in here too. I think there's, there's some traps as well. I don't know what all of these do, and I don't know how good all of these are. So I can't really give my opinion on it too well, uh, but I can say that that DDD what they have it seems to be good. The problem I think I see is is not enough good main deck monsters. Uh, you've got D, uh, Night Howl which is good. 
uh, and you've got, uh, where is it, the slime. But besides that, it doesn't seem like any of the others are super great. Um, Ghost could be good, I'm not sure. Uh, recycles, it sends to the graveyard. Um, oh, it doesn't recycle, it, 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 it mills from the, from the deck, okay. Um, and if it's banished for something, you can return one of your... Okay, there, there's a recycling effect. I knew, I knew it had some kind of recycling on it. Uh, but yeah, so this thing, I don't think that's very good. It only does anything when it's normal summon and it's level 7, so probably not going to use that. This thing's a bit too situational, I feel, even though I really like the card art. Um, yeah, and then like some other normal monsters. There are there are a few more normal monsters, I think, um, but I never see Burfamot used. I never see Pand... Well, I think I've seen Pandora used once, um, but no more than like one in a deck. So yeah, it doesn't seem like they have a lot of their really good main deck monsters. And part of that is because they're also a pendulum archetype. Uh, they have pendulums included in a lot of their main deck monsters uh, that are playmakers are um, pendulums. So they can't put those in the game, obviously. So there is a limitation with this archetype, though I think uh, with what you got, you might be able to do something interesting. Um, the rest of the Malevic stuff, there's the gear, which is really good. The gear uh, can help you, uh, both of the gears uh, can make you the synchro. Uh, which is which is a pretty decent card. It's got 4,000 attack and defense. Uh, when summoned, you select a synchro monster in either player's graveyard and special summon it. Uh, this is good right now because synchros are pretty meta at the moment uh, with Christrons and, and others as well. Uh, so this is this is definitely a pretty decent card. Um, however, it is very much specific to only working against synchros. So if your opponent's using fusions or no extra deck at all, um, you will have the problem where this card a lot of times will just be just a fat beat stick. Um, however, there's also another restriction that if this card, uh, that this card has, if Malefic World is not based on the field, destroy this card. So it does not work with Necker Valley. Um, it only works with the field spell, which is a bummer. It, it's a bummer. Uh, so what is that field spell? Well, it's basically, it's basically a dual link skill before dual link skills were invented. Uh, it replaces your normal draw with, uh, adding a random Malefic card from your deck to your hand. Uh, so, it, it, literally a dual link skill. <laughs> uh, you know the ones, like reinforcements and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 not bad by any means, but it's not that great either. Uh, it guarantees your draw, which is nice, but it doesn't exactly do anything besides that. It just has to be on your field because it's required for Malefics to function. That's why I think Stardust and Gravekeepers is going to be a better strategy than Malefics themselves. Um... But yeah, besides that, moving on, uh, let's see, uh, Ancient, Ancient Pixie is, is pretty decent. It uh, it can, whenever you activate a field spell, you draw a card, and uh, once per turn, you can uh, just nuke a face-up attack with a monster, uh, but you have to have a field spell on the field. I feel like this this box is very field spell focused, <laughs> uh, strangely enough, so uh, I feel like Pixie Dragon fits right in here. They, they may have put this thing in here just because of Malefics. Um, one thing that is kind of annoying though that I've noticed, there are now three main boxes with Stardust's face on it. <laughs> Stardust in some form. The the first one, Spark Dragon, and now this. It's it's kind of it's kind of annoying, I guess, but Blue Eyes kind of has a similar thing going for it, so uh, I won't lie. The artwork is very cool, and I can't complain too much about that, so. Uh, now uh, let's save this one for later. There's dinosaur stuff, miscellaneous uh, ooh, excuse me. Miscellaneous Saurus. Very good. Uh, a reprint of Jurak Elio, which is going to be good with the new uh, Jurak support, but I don't think Jurak are going to be very meta. <laughs> there is uh, some Dino Wrestler stuff. Don't hold your breath. Dino Wrestler typically are not very good, and uh, it seems like they didn't give them their Synchro or Fusion, so they're not good at all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, 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 I would not expect anything from Dino Wrestler, uh, though there probably will be like something, one of these cards that can fit good in a, in a generic Dino build. Um, I'm sure there's one in here somewhere that could, that could work. Um, I just don't know all of them, and I don't care to know all of them, because i tried playing them multiple times. You can check it out on Six's channel. I've tried playing Dino Wrestler, and most of the time it just ends up just being terrible. <laughs> so, uh... Try it if you're crazy. Now for the big thing. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I get to the big thing. There's uh, quite a bit of Crystal Beast support. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty good. We got Bridge, which searches for any Crystal spell. Very good. 
Also, Crystal Conclave, which is super good. You get to return, um, you get to get rid of this card and um, uh, return a Crystal Beast and a card your opponent controls uh, to the hand. So it's basically Raigeki Break, but um, without destruction. Uh, so I think that's I think that's pretty good. Um, it also has another effect when a um, just a passive effect. Whenever a Crystal Beast monster is destroyed by battle, you can special summon a Crystal Beast uh, from your deck. And uh, it's it's one per turn on that, but you basically get to do that multiple times. And I think that's a really good card. I think for Crystal Beast, this is a big win. On top of that, there was another card they got as well. Uh, where was it? I was just I was just looking at it, and now I've lost it. Uh, over the rainbow or rainbow refraction, excuse me. That's that's his name. I think over rainbow was was a good name. Why did they change it? If a monster you control whose original name is Rainbow Dragon or Rainbow Dark Dragon activates its effect this turn, you expose summon any number of Crystal Beast monsters with different names from your deck. Not very great, but it you know it is like another option for you to play. Crystal Pair. I think this is a reprint, um, and then Crystal uh, a Counter Gem. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, those two are reprints or re. It's not really a print since it's all digital, but but yeah. So Crystal Beast, I think, get a pretty decent win out of this. Now for the big one. Um, that I'm actually not too crazy about. I'm actually I'm actually a very uh, upset about this one. And this is Degrade Buster. I hate this card. <laughs> I I despise this card with all 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 passion. <laughs> you have to summon it. Uh, you have to first summon it by banishing two cybers from your graveyard. And then at any point you can just target a monster. Your opponent controls with higher attack, uh, and then banish it to the end phase. This is not permanent removal, uh, and it is targeting. But man, this is annoying. <laughs> Imagine every time you get something like you, you summon your blue eyes on board, the opponent just banishes it because of this. That is annoying. That is just that is annoying to be annoying. <laughs> There's no sense in it being that that freaking just annoying, right? And and the, the the limit is of, of of this is there's not many cybers in the game, until this box was made. <laughs> there's quite a bit now into the game. Um, there's a few of them here in rares. Um, this boosts cybers and allows you to tribute a cybers monster and a face up monster gets destroyed. Um, rescue interlacer, uh, which basically you can discard this card. You take no damage from a, a, a cybers monster, which is a way to easily put in the graveyard uh, for uh, degrade buster. Uh, but it has another effect as well. Uh, during the end phase, this card's in the graveyard because it was a card there. You can special summon this card. Um, so it has dual purpose there. And then you've got like dongle or data corn. Excuse me. Data corn. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess this is a card. Uh, you get to summon the token with it. Not a big deal uh, for this. It's really good for links. And links are in the game. We're getting XE soon, but um, not links anytime soon it'll be a few years before we get links so um but still the point is that there's there's cybers in the game that you can throw in here and uh yeah you can you can you can make that monster on the field pretty easily uh stuff like link streamer is also, is also pretty good as well there, there's just a lot of there's a lot of link uh of cybers that's say links cybers uh there's a lot of cyber stuff uh to work with here and I'm sure if someone wanted to, they could they didn't put their mind to it. They could definitely make a link. <sighs> Dang it, Cybers focused deck uh, with, with the Great Buster being their their main goal to bring out. And uh, yeah, I just I'm not a fan of this card because it's it's just free annoyance. It's it's free annoyance for no cost at all, uh, essentially. So it's also got like you know it's decent stats, 2500 across the board. So it's I, I don't like this card. I really don't. But I don't think Cybers will be a top deck, so I can at least rest on that. Will this card make the deck playable? Absolutely. Uh, but I think nowadays in Duel Links, you need more than just one card uh, to make your deck, you know, top tier or at least uh, really good. So um, while I think this this Cybers deck can work, I don't think it's going to be top tier. It will be just annoying though uh, to deal with. So. Uh, just be prepared for it. Your deck really nowadays has to have targeting protection or destruction protection really to be good. And this this is basically just ignoring destruction. It's going straight for banishing. So yeah, it is annoying. 
Uh, is it broken? Not at the moment. But in the future, as more cyber stuff is included, I feel like this is definitely going to be more powerful and more annoying. So, uh, besides, uh, besides that, there's some... So there's some good Malefic stuff in here, but I just don't think Malefic themselves are going to be a great deck. I do think Acid Trap Hole is interesting. Target a face down defense is a monster on the field, flip it face up, then destroy it if its defense is 2,000 or less, or return a face down if its defense is more than 2,000. This is essentially a combo tool with um, with um, Floodgate and Kanadia. Uh, you run this in here, maybe one of, maybe two if you're crazy. Um, maybe in a Trap Tricks deck, right? <laughs> You can combo this with Floodgate, and uh, you can make it work. So, I think it's I think it's interesting, but I don't think it's going to be applicable in, in most decks. <laughs> but besides that, other hidden gems, um, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of them at the moment. Um, it's just this this box is I don't know if it's going to be super meta or not. Uh, the the thing I'm calling meta is probably going to be, um, or at least tested in the meta. Uh, it's going to be DDD. Malefics are probably going to get tested uh, and played with, and I think Necro Valley. I think Gravekeeper Necro Valley is going to going to become more popular with the introduction of Stardust. So it was like that in the TCG. So it'll, it'll, it'll probably follow the same pattern uh, unless people just realize if it's if it's bad or not. Uh, just deep break activate only when your opponent declares an attack against the face of a normal monster you control. Destroy all monsters on the field except uh, face of attackers and normal monsters. So. You can run this in blue eyes. I don't think this is going to make blue eyes super good, but this could potentially add a bit more um, defensive flair to it. Um, it's just the problem is it nukes your other monsters is the problem. The best opportunity for you to use this is to tag out Spirit Dragon into Azure and um, have a normal monster on the field and then just um, do that. Alternatively, you cannot run this in blue eyes. You could also just run this in level 4 2000 attack normal monster dot deck and and play like that i suppose but that's not very fun <laughs> so yeah you could do this um and it will probably win you some games um but yeah it's basically mirror force we're getting different versions of mirror force we got the plant one last box uh and now we've got uh jesse break so we're experimenting more with mirror force and i'm not personally a fan of it but i play ancient gears for a reason <laughs> uh for these type of cards exactly so um but yeah that's basically all i got about the box um i really have nothing else to say about it like i said i don't do, know too much about ddd um but uh they they seem to have enough tools to function i'll, I'll say that um but yeah this is going to be an expensive deck any one of these decks you try and go for it is a main box so it is going to be expensive by nature um but yeah so it, it's out in the game i think right now it's yeah yeah it's it's, it's 30th so um people are out so yeah, test it if you want to, dig into it. I personally probably won't, um, but it's up to you. If Gravekeepers with uh, Stardust becomes popular, I'll probably search for, I'll probably dig for a, a Stardust or two. But besides that, I don't know. I think it's uh, I think it's an okay box. I don't think it's anything super super spectacular, but it's something. I think it's you know it's it's new content, so I'm never down. I'm never I'm never against new content, so. I'll take some testing on 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 the deck tester here and Yu-Gi-Oh Pro dueling book whatever, uh, and I and I will definitely watch the meta weekly. So that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Till next time, peace out.